the Wendy Williams Show. at home. How you doing? I'm doing okay, let's get started. It's time for Hot Topics. Come on. I've got something for you. Oh. A clip from my event. Oh. So you know. <laughs> That's Sierra as Wendy, she plays me. Okay, let me just set you up. Don't forget, on um, Saturday, January 30th, at eight o'clock on Lifetime is the Wendy Williams movie where the actors will be playing out all the people in my life and things like that. Um, and true stories, this is my story. And, and, um, and then right after that at um, eight o'clock to uh, 10 o'clock is the movie and then uh, 10 o'clock uh, to midnight is the documentary. Yeah. Called, What a Mess. And so, without further ado, I will tease you now. Look, if you're gonna lay on the table and have somebody else cut you open, I say you see at least three doctors first. And then you decide between them. But most importantly, I say, pay for your own plastic surgery. I mean, seriously, do you really want some future ex-boyfriend out here talking about how he bought your breast? I mean, Skill, would you do that? Hell no. You better not. Okay. okay. Oh, um. It's, uh, it's 78 degrees, stay tuned because we've got more hits for you from Biggie Nas and Tribe Called Quest after the break. You're off the air next week. What? Why? You can't talk about your plastic surgery on the air. You do realize that 80% of the stars that we interview here have had work done. I mean, Skell saw it, I saw no, it, everybody no, sees it. No. You're off the air for two weeks. And when you come back, tone it down, okay? How dare they? How dare they? The only thing that they forgot is that um, the boss who looked like she was having a nervous breakdown while trying to tame me, and Skeletor, that was the actor posing as you. That doesn't look like Skeletor at all, but um, scale. Um, the boss forgot to say suspended without pay for two weeks. Oh yes, digging in my pocket for the purpose of just speaking my truth. All right. Um, Megan the Stallion, friend to the show. Well, you know, she um, got her start um, in the kitchen, telling us about how she's gonna be big. VH1 released Megan the Stallion's audition tape. It wasn't really an audition tape. It was kind of like she knew that she had it. It was just a matter of getting there. Take a look at Megan's confidence. It's Megan Thee Stallion, AKA Young Tina Snow, AKA the Ace Town Lottie. And I'm from Houston, hey, Texas. Megan. And I'm just the best female rapper that's popping <laughs> out right now. And on top of that, I'm a full-time wow. college student, okay? Megan Thee Stallion is just gonna become that household name. Like when you're talking about those popping rappers, like I'm gonna definitely be in that conversation. And she wasn't wrong. 
she got in the conversation. The interesting thing is, is that I could see how some bosses would have overlooked her by thinking that because she's a full-time student, she doesn't have time to tour and you know be back and forth to New York all the time for interviews and, and grooming and stuff and, and you know studio time. And then the other thing is that she was so confident that um, they probably doubted at first her confidence on wax, so to speak. But good for her, she made it. But I honestly, I loved the Mona Scott in uh, Snow, the Informers video. Mona Gal, we got you winding right there. <laughs> look, look. Mona wasn't auditioning for anybody. She was a, a dancing girl in Snow, the Informer, which I would love to hear that song during um, commercial break here in the studio. I got you, I got you, I got you. Okay, okay. Stop, start, and rewind it too. All right. <laughs> and then, um, Suzanne? Yeah, oh yeah. You do what um, Mona does. Oh, I will. Uh, yeah. yeah, I'll do it. No, and during commercial break. Uh huh. I'll do it. I'll, yeah, I can do that. And then, and then Mona went on to be a star, but look how low she was dipping it back then. How old do you think she was? Like 18 or something? <laughs> um, <laughs> Suzanne's practicing. <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> leggings would have worked better than jeans, though, because leggings give at the knee. Yeah, and my knees already hurt just from those couple movements. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that was a long song, too. Oh, oh God. <laughs> Lori Laughlin's husband, Mossimo, is having a hard time in prison. Wah, wah, wah. So, you know, he got his tough guy makeover to go to prison. You know, he figured he needed a, you know, cut the hair off, let the beard be the beard, and he's going to prison. He's on his way right there. This is like a week before. Well, now he's in prison. Now you know he's gonna serve five months. Massimo, though, oh, oh mm -mm. he lied on a test, and so you go to prison for that. <laughs> Massimo has spent the last month, well, first of all, um, how long has he been there? About a month and one uh, day. Yeah, about like December. Yeah, like a month and one day. Exactly. He's been in prison. So immediately, practically, when he gets there, they throw him in solitary confinement due to corona. Oh. But the solitary that they threw him, well, first of all, in his solitary, he can only take a shower three times a week. Oh. <laughs> well, no, some people say ew, and other people say wah, 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 because a lot of you all watch it, you know you don't take a shower except for once a week. <laughs> And those are, those are the people who are free and at home watching. Some people's hygiene has been caught slipping during this corona, and you know who you are. Uh, anyway, and so the Daily Mail is reporting uh, the story that um, this is mentally and physically damaging him. Oh, well, a lot of people can't take solitary confinement. Like, I, the idea of not having, I don't wanna be put in solitary confinement. You know, like the corona's put all, a lot of us in solitary. Um, I don't like that, but just being by yourself and your thoughts and no one using your toilet, the toilet is right there, as a matter of fact. <laughs> right, you just get out of bed. <laughs> Roll out of bed. <laughs> Hop over. <laughs> and wash your hands at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> it's a small space that's easy to clean. Please. No word on what he's eating. Um, but you know what? A lot of people say they could let him out until Corona is over and then make him go back in and serve his full five months. But we don't know when Corona is gonna be over because those vaccines are not uh, getting to people fast enough. And they're also talking about a new wave that's coming out of Japan right now that's here. So this could be like three years where he's just walking around with an ankle bracelet waiting to do five months. By then we would have forgotten all about him and gone on to something else. No, I say he needs to stay in jail. Um, solitary confinement, you might say is harsh, but because of corona, it's not harsh. He doesn't have corona, but there's a, a big outbreak there at the prison where he's in. Now he entered prison in what they call medium security. Min, excuse me, minimal security. This is where, you know, white collar crime, he could have probably made some good friends for business and otherwise, and everything would be fine. But because of um, his, his um, 
solitary confinement, they only had confinement places in the mid security, the midi security. There's a midi, right, it's, it's crowded over here, so they put him in here. Well, in midi security, all he hears at night is fights and screaming and objects breaking. <laughs> and this is bothering him mentally. You know, you could work on your fashion designs, Massimo. Like, you could do something really productive during this, um, this time. Ugh. There's this prison inmate, for instance, Massimo, and, and all the other inmates. Hi, hi, hi. <laughs> How y'all do it? Listen, this inmate right here faces nine months in solitary confinement because his mother blew the whistle on his creativity. You see, his name is Rashad Stanley. Remember that name? He, um, he's in prison for multiple um, robberies where um, a gun was involved. No word on that he had the gun, but you know, he was with people and like that. Rashad's video went viral last month because his mom put it out. His mom, yeah. But look at the prison clothes. He makes them out of anything he could get his hands on, which I think is so creative. Look, he even has a red carpet, though it's a white carpet. And, and he's modeling them all himself. He's got his cameraman. The lighting looks better than a lot of fashion shows I've seen. He's, he's got a mask on. I don't know whether that's his sign or not, but. I need me some of those clothes. You know I love creativity. He sewed his clothes out of dental floss and paper clip. Yes, the dental floss is the thread, which is probably about as sturdy as weave thread for us weave girls we know. And then, and then the needle was made out of a paper clip. And you know with a paper clip, all you have to do is hook around and then thread it through. And then if you wanna sharpen it, and of course you do, you just rub it on the floor and sharpen it up. First of all, what are paper clips doing in, in prison? Uh -huh. And why would he use them to make clothes as opposed to pick his lock and escape? <laughs> I mean, I like his, don't, clap if you like his clothes. <laughs> but clap if you think Rashad should sit down, do his time and go on with his life. Say. Norman, watch the mail, just in case I get something. Okay, mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> I'm not inviting him here, I know that look. Right, I'm like, mm. <laughs> If you've done a crime and it involves a gun, <laughs> yep. Norman does not want you anywhere around here. <laughs> stay, stay away. Stay away. <laughs> You're still talking about sex in the city. <sighs> So I'm glad that it's back. A lot of people are not glad that it's back. A lot of people are saying there is no sex in the city without, without Samantha, Kim Cattrall. A lot of people are saying, well, you've already heard probably on the news that they're each getting a million dollars per episode. They're shooting 10 episodes, that's $10 million per girl. That's a great paycheck. Sarah Jessica Parker does not need the money. She and her husband, their family has plenty of money, but I think that she's attracted to the attention that we give her um, everywhere she goes in the world and here in Manhattan. Um, I think that Kristen Davis is probably not in need of the money. She's more creative, you know, like she wants to be on Broadway, not Sex in the City, but she might as well go along with Sex in the City. So fine, I'll take the million. Wait a minute. All right, 10 mil, all right, well, I'll take it, okay. And then um, Cynthia Nixon, I feel like Cynthia Nixon got caught up in, uh, she, she loves the politics of New York, trying to make it better for the kids and try to make it better for us adults. And then, you know, she came out herself and she's got a wife and a full family. And she's just, I, I don't believe money rules her. So I don't believe that the girls, all three of them, came back for the money. I also don't believe that there was ever, in my mind, that there was ever an invitation extended for Kim Cattrall to be back because we've all heard about the backstage fighting going on while the show was going on. This is before um, Corona and everything that SJP did not get along with Kim Cattrall. And so the other girls had to choose. And of course you go with your boss and you know that SJP was the boss of that show. You know, she went from being an actor to all of a sudden her name was right up there with Cherry as executive producer of the show. Mm -hmm. and, and she, I'm sure, has a very mean streak in her that told those girls with one look what to do.
But as actresses, you know how to play that off when the camera says go. And I don't think that Kim Cattrall is ruled by money either. I, you know, from what I understand, she lives a very happy life of a 50-something year old woman, or she might be in her early 60s at Six, this point. 64, actually. She's 64. Yeah. She looks fabulous. I, you know what? Do I think that she cares that these girls are coming back and it's gonna be big and that they're making a million dollars, equaling $10 million for this? She might care a pinky toe, Zorth. Just, just a smidge. But will she be watching? No. You know, she'll watch the episodes that she's on when they come on. I think that she is in a peaceful life point of view. At 64 years old, women and men grow into something besides their money and their children mattering the most in the world. You know, she's got her health. She's got her happiness. I'll bet you she's got a billionaire or something going on. This is 64. She looks great. So I love all four girls, and no, I don't think that they need to put in another girl uh, to replace the Kim Cattrall character. No, I don't. Um, and yes, I'm glad that they are all still living here in New York so that they can appreciate, and then we can salute them also, still. Like, you're back, yeah, you know, thumbs up, you're back, yeah. <laughs> Basketball Wives is finally back. Well, you've been wondering about it. I haven't really much thought about it, but all of a sudden I care about it a lot because Corona is here and it's been, they've been off for over a year and Shawnee is right there in front. Shawnee O'Neal is still the boss, but she's not the star. They tell me that the star is Evelyn Lozado who I told you I still need a, an apology. I need to apologize to. Remember the shoes in Miami and the ex-husband and the jump off and the whole bit. You know what I'm talking about, Ev. Mm -hmm. You got that. Uh, let's see. Jennifer is in there. Jennifer Williams. You see her at the top with the basketball in the air. Um, now, now, Tammy uh, Roman, she quit. Because her daughter w was going to be a big rap star? Yeah, I think she's managing her daughter. She acts. She has a very successful um, internet, like, Instagram show. She, uh -huh, okay. Uh -huh, the Bonnie Chronicles. She's popular. Okay, so she's doing her thing. Mm -hmm. so, so Tammy quit. The other girls are there. Is OG coming back? OG is coming back. And, you know, she and Evelyn don't get along. So right. they're going to be locked in a mansion together. <laughs> yeah, a mansion. <laughs> a mansion. Well, you know. Oh, these girls are wealthy. Now, this, these girls fight like they break things and, and do stuff. Uh -huh. That should be entertaining. <laughs> Lamar's ex, uh, Liza Morales, friend to the show, she's on as well. Liza, remember, is um, the mother to Lamar's oldest, hi, Lammy, to, to his oldest children. And so, and she's doing it for college tuition and for money to take over. Um, where she says that Lammy has not been paying child support. Oh, mm -mm. Lamb, <laughs> you know, you and I talk through the TV. Mm -hmm. He's okay, he's okay. Just take care of your family, Lamb. Take care, and this is, this is the first family. The first family, take care of them. Oh, wait, I have a sneak peek of Basketball Wives. Oh. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Right? So much time has gone by. Why don't we get a mansion? So you gonna invite all the ladies, huh? Let's just put that behind us and stop the nonsense. I'm not taking no shit. It's us against the world. Wait, that one that I like a whole lot. Which one? The older, more mature oh, one whose Jackie husband- Jackie Christie. Jackie Christie. Kind of a national treasure. Jackie, <laughs> you and your husband, Casper. Doug Christie. He's very pale, right. he's very pale. <laughs> he's, he's very pale and he's very obedient. Um, and I like Jackie Christie a whole lot. I, you know what? I'm here for it. Basketball Wives, everybody, is going to be on VH1 Tuesday, February 9th. 